What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Transformers Earthrise, Wave 2, Battlemasters, Autobot Rung and Decepticon Sliver Thang. I thought that it would be nice to cover both of these two releases in one accumulative review as they're fairly small and they honestly don't take that long to review nor to transform. So to begin with we'll take a look at one of the more lacklustre releases to come out of Wave 2, that being Autobot Rung who I believe is just a repackaged version of his Siege counterpart. However I actually never managed to pick up the original version of Rung so for me this is the first time handling this paint deco. I know we did get this release with the Netflix Ultra Magnus however that had a drastically different colour scheme. I believe that was completely transparent plastic whereas this one is solid plastic and I was really surprised to see how much paint applications they actually put on such a small figure. You can see here that for the head sculpt I absolutely love the head sculpt much like I did on the Battlefield Rung that came with Ultra Magnus. You can see all of the individual sculpted in details and the paint applications on the head sculpt are truly tremendous for its scale. We also have got some nice details here for the torso with the circular section in his chest being picked out in a metallic blue as well as these lighter shades of orange on this lining detailing on the torso and the fires are actually painted as well which is really surprising. I would have just expected them to have perhaps left them a standard plastic colour and definitely not painted them to this degree but you can see all of the level of sculpting and detailing here. You can pick up the head, the torso, the arms, the fists and even the fingers and of course you've got the shins and the feet here which I all think looks really nice. Very quickly running for articulation, the head does not move whatsoever which is unfortunate. However, the arms are on ball joints so you can lift those forwards and backwards as well as hinge those out to the side. We do indeed get a waist rotation joint which isn't utilised for transformation either so that's also quite a nice piece of articulation to see on such a small character. We do have ball joints here for the legs kicking forwards as well as kicking back. However, it is slightly restricted due to this back kibble although you could move that out of the way and easily get a full range of motion out of that. We can also hinge the legs out to the side so he can somewhat do the split, not to a great degree and I imagine if you do force it the ball joint will pop off. So in terms of articulation it's fairly basic but considering this figure is so small I'm quite happy with what we have. In order to transform him you want to lift this section up, take the arms here and just fold those in and the tabs on the back of the arms will peg into a slot on this section and then just take the legs here, compress those and here we have Rung fully transformed up into what appears to be some form of weapon. I do believe in the IDW comics he does have a very significant role which I won't spoil in this review in case you haven't read those yet. But if this is based on what he's supposed to be in the IDW comics it's an awesome looking alt form. He does of course come with some blast effects. These ones here look more like energy effects. Once again if you've read the IDW comic you'll know the origin of these and what they're supposed to replicate. I think the transparent plastic on this looks amazing with all the molded in detail and I absolutely love the shade of blue that they've gone for with this release and it is very flexible as you would imagine from these blast effects however you can port these into the soles of Rung's feet and have it look as if though Rung is emitting some type of energy of course I will not spoil it for those who haven't read the comics but if you know what I'm talking about then you'll definitely be very happy with the overall look of this. I will show you how to incorporate this figure later on when I show you how to incorporate Sliver Fang with a figure. So just setting Rung off to the side for now and taking a look at the main character that I was most looking forward to out of this second wave of Battle Masters. Here we have Decepticon Sliver Fang and I think that he looks absolutely tremendous. He's of course supposed to be a snake or a cobra that is showed here with the rather large middle torso section around where the head is and I just think that the overall sculpt work for this works so so nicely. A cybernetic looking snake like creature has been replicated amazingly here for the battle masters. You can see for the head sculpt very menacing with the very sharp teeth evident there. You can pick out the details of a lower jaw however there's no hinge to actually hinge the jaw down which is slightly unfortunate but we do have some nice details there for the eyes and you can see the panel lining detailing on the top of the head as well as some nice details here to give you the illusion of I presume scales or some type of skin like texture of a real life snake and you can see you've got some nice details here which is indeed painted and then as we turn to the back of the figure you can see this is mainly for when we transform him into his shield mode or his platform mode and then the lower section is of course treads as of course Sliver Fang needs a mode of transport so I can just imagine him slivering around Cybertron looking for his next victim and of course this here is the tip of the tail which I think looks really cool as well. So overall in terms of detail and the overall execution of this I think that it looks absolutely fantastic. For articulation the head can hinge up and down 
mainly due to transformation. We do get a hinge joint here as well as a hinge joint here, so double hinge joint here, allowing you to get this figure into quite a fairly dynamic range of motion. We do also get a full 360 degree rotation here, and then finally we do get a small hinge joint here for the tip of the tail. In order to transform him, very simplistic, you just want to lift this section up, take this platform here and raise this over the top. We can then take this piece and you're going to want to align these slots up with these tabs. So just take all this, thread this piece through so that we expose the port on the opposite side and then just snap that into place. And here we have Sliver Fang in his platform slash shield looking mode. And the colors really resemble that of Siege Barricade. So I'm not entirely sure as to whether or not this figure is supposed to accompany Siege Barricade. But if you have that figure, I'm sure this will look amazing. And if you've seen my sound barrier review, you'll know that I absolutely love the design and the look of these. I think that the overall transparent plastic looks amazing. And I love how you can all interlock these to create for a really awesome holographic looking display. I can just imagine the Autobots and the Decepticons utilizing these holographic platforms in order to help aid their motion across Cybertron or using them in order to form them quickly during battle. I just think that's such a cool looking concept and it's something that I hope to see in Earth Rises. Unfortunately, we never saw anything like this in the most recent Chapter 1 Siege. We can, of course, take the new blast effect. Something which is a slight downside to this is that there's no actual port. Now, that is a pro and a con. The pro to that is that we have a very clean looking blast effect. Sometimes if you peg blast effects onto certain figures, you can clearly see a small port and it does break up the illusion. The con to that is that you cannot peg this into the barrel of a gun or tab it into any five millimeter port, which is unfortunate. However, I do imagine that this is probably specifically designed to look as if though it is an impact blast. And you can see that the sculpted in detailing here is really nice as well. It would have been nice if they could have given it a dark wash much like they did with Siege Omega Supreme. But nonetheless, I think that this all looks really nice. So definitely a super cool looking figure, just separating the accessory off to the side for now and bringing in Sound Barrier, two of my favorite battle masters. You can see that in terms of length, they are more or less exactly the same size, but they are incredibly different in terms of their designs. And I've got to say, I still think Sound Barrier is probably my favorite. I absolutely love the shade of blue that they've got going here for the transparent plastic. And I think that the silver really contrasts rather nicely with that. But that's not to take anything away from Sliver Thang. I think that he's got an amazing looking robot mode, whereas Sound Barrier's robot mode was a little less desirable. Of course, you can interlock these, and something which I do actually like about these is that as they are transparent plastic, you would probably be rather weary about keep tabbing these in. However, it's got this almost rubbery nature to it. Really and truly don't think that the clips are going to break, at least foreseeable future. I have tabbed these in multiple times, and I've seen no stress marks on any of the clips whatsoever, so that's a really nice design choice that Hasbro and Takarotomi have done. I think that the plastic is super sufficient for the job that it's supposed to replicate. Just for a quick robot mode comparison, it won't take a second to transform sound barrier up into his robot mode so here we have sound barrier and then reverse transformation here for sliver fang just want to collapse that down and then hinge the tail section out to the side so just flip that out just to give you a quick size comparison between the two you can see that once again they are more or less exactly the same in terms of their height with perhaps sound barrier being ever so slightly taller than sliver fang however that is due to the way the overall backpack compresses but you can see here for robot modes where I think Sound Barrier won in his holographic mode. I really do think Sliver Fang wins in terms of his overall look for robot mode. Now turning to the entire integration aspect of these figures with some of the larger Leader and Voyager figures. Here I have both Megatron and Optimus Prime. So to quickly showcase you can see that Rung here does have a tab that will of course slide into any 5mm port. So we can just peg that into Prime's hand and have Optimus Prime utilising Rung. Or what I really do like to do, and perhaps this is giving away some slight spoilers to Rung's overall backstory, but you can take these awesome looking effects, open up Optimus Prime's chest, and actually peg these into the matrix of leadership to look as if though perhaps it's emitting a blast. And I just think that that effect and the color scheme really works very nicely with the look of the matrix. We can also take Sliver Fang here. And this is one of the criticisms that I have with this figure is that you can see the port exposed. However, there's no real tab behind it in order to stop it from collapsing down. That can make it rather finicky to actually port it into the figure's arm as there is definitely quite a lot of force when doing so. So what I like to do is just put my thumb here apply the pressure, swivel that on, and then just collapse it. But once again, it doesn't really collapse all that flush against the arm. You can see that there still is a gap and you cannot peg that in any further, which is slightly on the unfortunate side as I do believe that Sound Barrier did compress a lot more closely to the arm than Sliver Fang does, but I'll probably more than likely keep Sliver Fang in his awesome looking robot mode. 
So that was my review of both the Transformers Earthrise Battlemasters Rung as well as Battlemaster Decepticon Sliverfang. I really do hope that you enjoyed this review and that you did enjoy that I put both of these figures together in one accumulative review. I actually really like these figures. I think that they're heaps of fun. I love the overall compatibility with Sliverfang and some of the other modular base platforms. I think that that's one of the best play features about those and I absolutely really do love the entire transparent looking plastic. I think that looks super cool and is really and truly an awesome looking concept. Rung is also really fun as well. I do love his blast effects and I think that he does look quite cool in robot mode. I would probably more than likely utilize him in this mode though rather than utilize him in robot mode just as I wouldn't really know where to put him in terms of a collection so he's probably more than likely going to be used as a weapon for some of my other figures but that was my overall review. I highly recommend these figures if you can pick them up. I do imagine that they'll probably go on clearance so if you can get them for even cheaper than retail price then that's absolutely great. However if not I do think that these figures are also worth warranting picking them up at retail. I thank you all for watching this review and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.